And William Benny talked about the NSA had the power to stop 9-11. Weren't allowed to use those tools. Instead, everybody gets spied on because the political class wants these threats to be there, wants to keep them going, as William Benny has said, to take more of our liberties so they can dominate the general political mass of the people who are not criminals. Joining us is William Benny, former technical director of the National Security Agency. I don't know where you want to start, sir. We could uh, get into the latest hacking situation with Ashley Madison. We could get into corporation spying. We could get into exposed facts, uh, the site that has your info posted, the tour you just came off of speaking around the world. We could get into this call for interning Islamists that are radicalized. Um, what do you want to tackle first, sir? Uh, uh, well, it's good to be with you again, Alex, but uh, can we start with the OPM uh, issue and the data uh, hacking? And Absolutely. Spot? Let's talk about uh, let's talk about the data hacking and more time in the spotlight for NSL 2014 and review this big court ruling. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, first of all, with the o with the OPM, when they lose all of that data, that's uh, you know, that includes things like uh, when you go for a uh, clearance with the government to work for the government, you fill out a form uh, that's that's an SF-86, a standard form 86, and that goes through your entire <laughs> your entire history, work history, uh, health issues, uh, your your family, all your family members, all their names, addresses, phone numbers, and uh, references. All the people you have done as references. Plus, uh, it it also authorizes them to. Uh, it, you you have to authorize them to re, to be to be able to acquire any kind of information health wise financially or anything else that the uh, FBI wishes to get. It's like a a universal NSL on every individual that applied. So all of that goes into the files in the OPM. And, and and so in layman's terms, the the reported Chinese hack that Obama's covering up uh, is basically the secret files. <laughs> on federal employees, operatives, and others, an unprecedented breach. Who do you think's behind it? They're saying it's yep. China. Um, Mr. Benny, I mean, you're the expert on this. Who do you think's really behind it? Well, I, I think they're probably right that it is China. I think that's probably what it is, yeah. Uh, but there's something other, other, other than that. There's something even more uh, threatening here that is, I'm not sure what OPM had exactly in their files, but if they had all of the... Uh, they're supposed to compile all the data of your experience while you're working with the government. So it's like your central personal personnel file. Which will have a lot of well, intel on who's been investigated. This is a devastating breach. Yeah. And it would also list, uh, for example, uh, uh, letters of appreciation or uh, commendation or awards and things like that, which for, uh, for your work history, that is, if you achieve things in work, then they would write them up and you would get a letter or a or some kind of award, uh, uh, achievement award or something like that, which would go into describing what you did. So it would be classified. So now if that classified data is in there, also that means the Chinese have all of that too. Well, Mr. Benny, this is so bombshell, and I knew it was in the notes to go over. I'd like you to start over without me interrupting. Explain the data breach that happened, the clear hacks that have been going on, the glitches all over the place, the war between the U.S. and China. And then I want to go back uh, into the last time you were in studio with us, and, and we're going to put this together with that on the nightly news tonight, where you explained by putting everything on digital databases and by putting back doors and everything, it made our country wide open to foreign hacking and, and is the ultimate tool, Trojan horse, to make us absolutely uh, Swiss cheese penetrable. That has now within a month or two of you predicting it, has now happened. So explain it to us like we're just the lay public uh, and not 200 IQ super geniuses, you know, top code breakers like yourself. Uh, okay, let me, uh, if I can just put, uh, see if I can put it uh, uh, simply. Uh, if, for example, uh, you have a bunch of protected information that you want to, uh, that you have classified or or information about the people who are working for you, you're assembling it in a database so you can help manage your business. Okay, the industry would do this too. So, but if you put it in a database, uh, you have to try to ensure that that database is secure. Well, if, if NSA is going along and other intelligence agencies around the world are going along trying to, to find weaknesses in operating systems or, 
or firewalls or other kinds of encryption or things like that. And when they find them, they don't tell anybody so that what they can do, it gives them a window into everything that they are doing. Well, that simply says they're allowing a flaw in the system to exist and continue, uh, which can be discovered by anybody in the world. I mean, they have no they have no monopoly on smart people. There's lots of smart people all around the world. So that, that means that they eventually have a chance to get in and see that, too, which means that that then makes everybody with that system vulnerable. So, so they leave so the holes, it, they don't patch them. Please continue. Yeah, they leave them that way because they want to be able to look into what, what you're doing. So that they know they have a window in, but other people can discover that too. And when, when the other people do it, like the Chinese, for example, that means that they can come across and take everything that's in those files also. So, and when so it's now the it's safe to so, say the entire 21 million huge government database of operatives and uh, spies and uh, hackers, you name it, has now been grabbed by the communist Chinese. Uh, plus, potentially, some of the awards that they've, they've all achieved over their work history, which means it may outline some of the programs that are existing and some of the uh, techniques that were used to achieve the success. But almost no coverage of this. We, you know, we've heard Snowden's the biggest demon in the world for exposing illegal spying on the people but not actually releasing the intel. And now we have the system itself built so government agencies can go in and out of there and not have their uh, tracks seen to use this for power. Uh, now, because of their traitorous activity, uh, we've seen a devastating blow to national security. Right, and it also outlines all the contractors that are involved with the NSA or CIA or anybody else. And it, uh, it, it gives them, uh, like, for example, that's how the Chinese came up with the the design of the F-35, uh, you know, that's the same design as ours, but they got, the, they got it from us. They didn't get it from, you know, from having to do the development themselves. They don't so, have to spend $400 million now. They can just take it for free. Yeah, they take it from the contractors, yeah, who are, but, you know, the weaknesses then are system-wide. All the contractors that are involved also have to be protected in the same level, and they're not. And that's why they're being able to get into these systems. So, I mean, it makes everybody vulnerable. Why are we uh, seeing prosecution of journalists that expose the crime, but then they let the communist Chinese operatives also work in these secret facilities as well, who are then physically, as a brain trust, uh, taking the plans out of the building? Uh, you know, it's beyond me. I can't understand this myself. I really can't. I mean, it's, it's absolutely astounding. How can people do this? I just don't understand it. I mean, if whistleblowers come out and show that there's a problem or an issue or something illegal or something, you know, criminal or some fraud or waste, why? I mean, it would be it's in the vested interest of the organization, the government or the industry to address that issue. If they want to improve as a as a corporation or a government, they should address it to fix the problem instead of letting the problem fester and continue because it only allows, you know, all of these follow on things to happen. So, you know, it's, it's in, almost unfathomable to me as to how they would, uh, you know, just let this continue like that. It shows a really decadent attitude and a laissez-faire attitude by these people. This smells like an empire on the verge of collapse to me. Just all of this craziness going on uh, really, really stinks to high heaven. Yeah, it certainly does, yeah. I absolutely agree to that. Well, I've asked some of the questions here. You you brought up these huge data breaches. Then that ties into, as you said, commercial outfits, everything from Amazon to Bank of America to Ashley Madison with 37 million cheaters on it. Now they're saying they're going to publish that in a database so men and women can find out if their husband or wife cheated on them. I mean, it just seems like all this open source, open code, backdoor open stuff is, is going to bring down the world. It certainly makes the world vulnerable to all kinds of uh, manipulation and uh, monitoring and uh, all kinds of blackmail or things like that happening anywhere in the world for anybody. Not, not just, uh, it's not just the average citizen, but it's also members of parliaments around the world, government officials, everybody. What about planted info? I know I've seen a lot of cases or different agencies in this government and others plant stuff on people's computers. Uh, isn't it easy for them to go in and plant stuff with these backdoors? Yeah, you see, that's part of the problem. That, that, that makes that all possible, too. 
Uh, and that means that, uh, you know, it, it gets back to a question of trust. How can you trust a government that has the capability to do that? And, they're, and if they do everything in secret, you never know what they're doing. And so it's very difficult to prove one way or another that they did or didn't do that. Uh, the way we did it, of course, was to have uh, duplicate copies of everything we ever did in multiple places so you're backed up so that if they manipulate anything... Uh, then we could show it from a record copy from another source that we had. Weren't you able to do that yourself? Did they try to set you up, but you, somebody inside warned you? Uh, well, we I, we didn't have any. In, uh, it was basically we understood how these people operated, so we did the backups like I just said, and so that when they took data and tried to accuse us of something, we already had retrieved all the data from our backup sources. And so they couldn't claim things that didn't exist in our backup sources. So we could show in court uh, record uh, copy, you know, emails, things like that, that would uh, demonstrate that what they were saying was untrue. I'm going from memory last time you were physically here. There was some other facet to it, though, where someone inside basically stopped them from being able to set you up. You don't know who they are, though. Oh, uh, that was the uh, in the Department of Justice. There was uh, somebody felt really bad about. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> excuse me, what they were doing to us. So they sent us a copy of their draft indictment, which which showed all of the uh, all all the falsehoods that they were attempting to claim against us. So there was somebody in the DOJ who actually felt bad about it. So I, you know, not everybody there is bad. Is what I'm trying to say. Sure, being yeah. in government for decades, being admittedly at one of the top uh, code breakers uh, ever. Moving up from the you know mailroom to the very top of the organization, basically to use that allegory or, or that analogy, and we're, and we're going to break here in a moment. Just a quick question: What percentage, as a guesstimation of government, would you say are good guys versus bad guys? I think the the uh, the corruption of people and and the conversion to the dark side starts around grade fifteen, which is probably uh, which is the government service grade. Uh, which is like a uh, a lieutenant or a bird colonel in the military. At that level on up is where the corruption really starts. And so at that point, uh, I'd say you're talking maybe about uh, 15% of the people. And it runs basically on a military system. You're just in plain clothes. In fact, you were a, what level were you, a, a, a general? Uh, uh, I was like, it, it's not quite equivalent to military, but it's like a 1.5 general, you know, star general, yeah. We'll be right back. Stay there. William Benny, former technical director of the NSA, is our guest. I'm Alex Jones. Stay with us. Please never forget Infowars.com, the syndicated radio broadcast, the TV transmission, the nightly news. All of it is funded by viewers and listeners like you. Now, we have a free video and audio feed of the TV slash radio show at Infowars.com forward slash show. And that cost us in bandwidth with the millions of people that tune in every month, just the free audio streams and the video streams, more than $20,000. That's with bandwidth going down in price. That's why we have subscription for the nightly news, which is five ninety five dollars a month. 20 people can use it. That money helps pay for the bandwidth to then put out the daytime show for free for folks that don't have AM and FM stations in their area. That's why I want to thank all of you that are PrisonPlanet.tv members. Now, I've signed the satellite deals. I have paid for the closed captioning. It's all set. I'm not going to announce when, but the next few months, we are going to launch on the major satellites, and it'll be on quite a few cable uh, and broadcast TV stations. We've already got more than 15 lined up, ready to turn it on. Some are already downloading it every day and playing it. And some of them are big, like in Houston, uh, on basic cable we're on to millions of customers. And I'm going to be listing those stations, thanking them. We're really in the establishment's face. But it is the PrisonPlanet.tv members, those of you that get to see all the films, get to see the shows first, get your direct access to the 20 years of work. When you are a PrisonPlanet.tv member, you're helping finance and pay to get the word out to the general public that doesn't know what's happening. So you can hear guests like Ron Paul and William Benny and so many others here on the broadcast. So I want to thank all of you out there for your support. If you're not a PrisonPlanet 
Infowars.tv member. We're fighting the creation of a prison planet in the Infowar. Please become a member today. If you are a member and aren't sharing your username with friends and family so they can tune in and watch, please do. You are the individuals that have the power in this fight to alert the sleeping giant and awaken this country and the world. And that's beginning to happen. As bad as things are, there's a lot of good happening as well. So, prisonplanet.tv. We have free shipping in the month of July, which has got another 10 days or so to go on all of the hundreds of high-quality products at InfoWarsStore.com or when you call 888-253-3139. 25% off the Molon Malabe Made in America belt buckles. 10% off all the Patriot apparel, T-shirts, you name it. And the profit goes to fund this operation. But satellites are the amount of time we have. And believe me, we haggled 15 grand a month, closed captioning 10,000 a month, not to mention reporters. All of it cost me millions and millions and millions of dollars a year. It is a testament to folks voting with their dollars that we're able to pay for all this. We couldn't do it in L.A. or New York because it's so expensive there. We're in Texas. And so by the grace of God, we're now reaching 20 million people a week, conservatively, one way or another, on all our platforms. I want to go to 40 million a week, 100 million a week. And so by going to InfoWarsLife.com, by getting the high-quality vitamins and minerals and proprietary product lines like DNA Force, Lung Cleanse, uh, our colloidal silver, super male vitality, survival shield, nascent iodine X2, that you'll find these real game-changing products and help support this transmission. So InfoWarsLife.com is the subsection that has the nutraceuticals of InfoWarsStore.com. But just go to InfoWarsStore.com and you can find everything right there. Okay, Mr. Benny, I've been asking some of the questions. Former head of technical operations at the NSA is our guest if folks just joined us, former technical leader for the intelligence with the NSA before becoming a whistleblower in 2001 to Congress. He did it the proper way until he got SWAT teamed. After more than 30 years with the agency, Benny has been described as one of the big best analysts and code breakers in NSA history. Benny continues to speak out on the NSA's data collection, exposedfacts.org. I've got a lot of questions to answer, uh, to, to try to get you to answer, but... I also want to hear what you think is important front and center. Uh, so go ahead, Mr. Benny. What else should the public know about from your expert perspective? Uh, well, relevant to, relative to the OPM uh, loss of data, I mean, they could have easily encrypted that data. It doesn't matter whether you have data stored on an old set of equipment or a new set. It's still stored in database in a database. You can encrypt a database no matter where it is. So they could have done that all along, but they didn't. So that even made them even more vulnerable. You know, so that would have been a simple solution for them to do and to, and to help protect that information. And they didn't even do that. So, I mean, they're not making good decisions here, period. I mean, these are not people who are competent at, uh, at securing anything. I mean, the same is true with NSA. I mean, they're doing this bulk acquisition of information and burying themselves. And I, I keep I use the case of the Garland shooting, Garland, Texas shooting down there where, you know, a member of Anonymous tipped off the local police down there that they were going to be attacked two days before the attack occurred. And yet our intelligence community, for which we pay over one hundred billion dollars a year, said absolutely nothing. Why? Because they're buried in so much information they can't find it. Whereas Anonymous was very focused they had a focused attack, a focused look at the at people who were involved in terrorism or were showing signs of uh, being radicalized. And, and they found the information, whereas our intelligence community didn't. And so they, they have the incompetence at the top levels of all these agencies are adopting the in, incorrect process for the entire agencies of the, of the uh, intelligence community. That means they're, they're making us all more vulnerable than we've ever been before. So, I mean, that's so important that people don't seem to realize, well, they keep saying they're doing this for our protection. Well, so did the Nazis in 1933 when they, you know, took power to do anything with anybody with NDAA, Section 1021, which is Special Order 48 for the Nazis. The same kind of thing has occurred down through history over and over again. And if their objective is to protect us, then they ought to do, do things smartly, professionally, and in, with discipline. And that's what they're not doing. 
So what is the end game? I mean, obviously, hundreds of billions of dollars are being made a year by private contractors and big companies. So they're always lobbying for more and more of this. But then you have giant sprawling facilities in Utah, Texas, Maryland, all over the place. Not to mention 800,000 people that are outside government with, with security clearances building the ultimate hackable uh, open door nightmare system how do they think they're going to get away with this? I mean, it's it's going to create more and more disasters. Now the Chinese have stolen 21 million background dossiers on federal employees and operatives. I mean, this is just unprecedented, and nobody's getting in trouble for it. Yeah, I think uh, th I think they feel <clears throat> that uh, the the this is what uh, uh, President Eisenhower really warned us about back in the 1961 was the power of the uh, evolving, at the time, military-industrial complex, is the way he called it. But it's really the military-industrial-intelligence complex, which includes government. <laughs> uh, the, the supposed intelligence committees that were supposed to prevent spying on U.S. citizens as a result of the FISA laws back in 1978, in fact, are now advocates for spying on U.S. citizens. So that's the kind of that's the kind of reversal that's gone on. I mean, our entire government in the intelligence related field, national security, if you will, has now felt that they're above the law. They're above the Constitution. They can do anything they feel is necessary and nobody's going to stop them. And everybody's afraid to do anything because they'll feel they'll feel that if political people started doing, they would they would fear being labeled, you know, weak on terror or weak on uh, national security and. And they don't want that label, and so therefore they go along to get along. Well, and take Rand the, Paul. That, he said four years ago, don't fund the Free Syrian Army. They're really Wahhabists out of Saudi Arabia. And then now they go on the news and say, because you're not for the Patriot Act extension or illegal NSA spying, it's going to be your fault when we get hit by terrorists when they have this giant NSA system and it didn't stop anything. That's exactly right, and that's because they're not doing a professional, disciplined approach. The management is directing something that is focused on getting more money and more money and building a bigger bureaucracy and not actually solving problems. That's, <clears throat> that's, what the, that's, what they've, that's the way they've approached this entire problem from the beginning, even before 9-11. I mean, it was basically they allowed things to happen uh, without actually uh, trying to stop them sure. and doing smart things to to, to make that happen, make that possible, you know, they just uh, they just uh, were looking for money as the main objective. Well, we know what's going to happen. The Chinese are going to use that database to make connections between the people uh, that are on the list and operatives inside their country, and they're undoubtedly going to end up imprisoning or killing U.S. operatives inside China and rolling up the entire Western operation. And it only seems like it's a matter of time before this confrontation with China escalates. But so many of our leaders are heavily invested in China. They're basically already double agents to China. I mean, this just seems like a recipe for disaster. Uh, I couldn't agree more. I mean, we're not doing anything smart in most international arenas. I mean, it's just not, uh, it's just not smart to do the taking the and doing the procedures that we're doing, even like with the... Uh, I don't understand why we didn't put more pressure on the Iranians to get a better deal. I mean, why didn't we ask for a better deal? It seemed like we caved on every point that they were asking on. I just, I, you know, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me to do that. You know, usually I can figure out what's going on. I can't figure out what's going on with Iran uh, because the West is clearly funding Iran's arch enemy, Saudi Arabia, and allowing them to run a, a, a Sunni takeover. And, and then meanwhile, we've been fighting a proxy war against Iran in Syria. But then on the other hand, we make a one-sided deal that is for Iran, and then they make fun of us. Uh, I mean, I, I, I can't figure out what's going on. Yeah, it's, it's hard to follow the bouncing ball in that arena. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. Uh, I, really don't, I really don't know what to say myself. I don't know how to, I don't know how to uh, you know, characterize that. Meanwhile, for those that just joined us, you got SWAT teamed uh, for going and whistleblowing to Congress, and they tried to put you and others in prison. So that's who this government's focused on, uh, is people like you that built so much of what they're misusing today. So I guess honorable service to the republic that's legal and lawful is punished. Being an absolute whore traitor uh, is, is rewarded. 
Yeah, I, I think I refer to that as uh, population control, which is the objective of mass acquisition of data uh, on everybody in your country, or on the planet. It's really population control. So that's really what they're after, I think. Uh, that way they get to manipulate anybody they want to do anything they want them to do. And then they just hope that other governments and corporations are too incompetent to know how to use the data that they can get as well. That just sounds arrogant. Well, so far it's been pretty much true, uh, except uh, that, that there's like some of the thing, cases when they have these uh, break-ins and theft of information, why that shows that others are starting to wise up too. So, I mean, it means that... that uh, it, it simply means that they can't uh, they can't uh, guarantee that they will be the only ones to be able to leverage this information. We'll take Ashley Madison. From the time I heard that being promoted on talk radio by Howard Stern and people, I just immediately thought that sounds like a recipe for blackmail. And then now 37 million people that have reportedly cheated on their spouses, that database has now been stolen. Why would anyone, if they were going to cheat on their spouse, Go do it on a mass database. Yeah, that's uh, really kind of, uh, <clears throat> it's really, people don't realize what's, what's possible today. And, uh, you know, with the, with the information systems we have, <clears throat> they just don't realize that the, this information is out there forever for just about anybody to get to it if they know how to do that. William Benny, former technical director of the National Security Agency, uh, is our guest, and we're here going over some of the latest developments. What do you make of a whole bunch of financial websites, the Wall Street Journal, airlines going down two weeks ago, the New York Stock Exchange going down, uh, and they said it was not connected to a hack. Um, do, do you have any info on that, Mr. Benny? I, I don't have any firsthand knowledge of that, but uh, but it sure sounds suspicious even by simply a time coincidence. That, uh, that those things are happening without some central or coordinated action. Uh, the, what's the, you have to try to figure the random probability of that actually being that, that way. <laughs> and it gets pretty, the random probability is pretty, pretty low, in my view, anyway. Since you were last on, Clapper, um, <laughs> of course, for folks that don't know who headed up the NSA, uh, his lawyer came out and said that uh, he was forgetful. He didn't mean to lie saying the NSA does no domestic spying. He was just forgetful. What do you make of that? Uh, I think that's just a, a bunch of uh, hogwash. <laughs> I mean, he was given those questions, you know, uh, two days in advance. So how can you be forgetful when you're given the questions you're going to be asked, asked, asked in, in, the, in committee and you go over them? How can you forget that you went over them? I mean, that's just a bunch, a bunch of malarkey. Well, we see how the Supreme Court's acting. We see how Congress is acting, doing whatever foreign corporations want. We've been conquered with blackmail. I think it's clear. It's come out that the British Parliament's being blackmailed with their MI6 spying. It's come out the CIA is spying on the Senate uh, Intelligence Committee. I mean, I think it's pretty clear. We've been hoisted on our own petard. We've been hung in our own rope. Uh, and that this technology has been used to overthrow the country. Uh, I don't have a, I, don't, I can't argue with that. That sounds very much on the mark to me. In your gut, do you think we're going to be able to reverse this or get it under control? Yeah, <clears throat> I really do because the, uh, one of the, one of the basic, the, the fundamental thing that they're most afraid of is being exposed. I mean, that's, that's why I think there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, uh, people who talk directly about issues, uh, create a, a real firestorm and are opposed by any number of people. That's because nobody wants to address the real hard problems. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, when it comes to it, they try to cover up things that they're doing. So, so they're very sensitive to having sunlight put on the events that, or the things that they've actually done. And, and some of that is coming out and even, even being more discussed in, in Europe now. For example, the Bundestag is finding out that the B&D had agreements with certain limited numbers of members of the higher level members of their government to do certain things with NSA that the rest of the Bundestag didn't know about. Well, the same was true in our Congress. You see, we exported that technique of how to co-opt in 
uh, 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 legislative areas around the world. How to give data to select people and then make them even more prominent because they're operatives. It's, it's, it's espionage. Let's come back and talk about that. When Merkel claimed a year ago she didn't know about NSA spying, and of course she did. William Benny's been over to Europe, has been speaking to these parliaments, and we'll find out about his recent travels. And then take a few of your phone calls, your quick questions, 800-259-9231. The story just broke on Infowars.com. Black rebel flag supporter dies after being ran off the road, witnesses say. That story's up on Infowars.com. They've got us all fighting over rebel flags while all of our basic freedoms are being stolen. William Benny is our guest with us 15 minutes in the next hour. We're going to talk to Steve, Chris, Eugene, and others. Quick questions or comments for our guest, one of the top NSA experts out there, 800 Two five nine ninety two thirty one. But uh, yeah, you've been out of the country and, and, and traveling the last few months, Mr. Benny. Uh, tell us about the progress you're making alerting the world to what's happening, because whether it's here in the U.S. or Germany or anywhere, uh, there are laws against this. This is not legal by any stretch of the imagination. So how are they getting away with it? Uh, well, that's what I've been suggesting when I go to, uh, uh, like, for example, Germany or Euro Euro Europe, anywhere in Europe. I mean, the European Union has the laws against uh, data uh, transfer without the permission of the individuals involved. I mean, they view information, uh, even if it's held by uh, telecoms or any kind of service provider, that it still is that information is the property of the individual. And so if they want to transfer it somewhere, or give it to somebody else or share it, uh, then they have to get the permission of that individual to do that. Otherwise, it's against their laws. So, so what that really means to me and then what I keep suggesting over there is that they should uh, file lawsuits and criminal prosecution against all these people for uh, sharing the information, all of the companies at least. Uh, if they don't want to do it against the U.S. government, then they should do it against the companies that are pr participating in this data sharing. Uh, specifically with the PRISM program or, or uh, any other of the uh, tapping programs. Even, even the, the, uh, the Bundestag has found out, I believe, that uh, just recently that the, uh, the BND was cooperating with NSA and sharing uh, data about German citizens and other European citizens as well with the NSA. So, I mean, that's also against their laws. So, I mean, they have ample opportunity, if they want to, to, to charge these organizations with criminal prosecution. I mean, they just need to start doing it. Or what comes next? I mean, if we don't reverse this big brother on steroids move, where does it end? I mean, you know, Samsung six months ago, with all its new customers that buy their new TVs, tells you, we watch and listen to you and sell the data. I mean, I mean, not just watch your patterns of what you view to sell a algorithm profile, but... They're actually listening and watching you. I mean, how crazy is that? I know. It's insane. I mean, why would anybody want to buy a product like that? I mean, I certainly wouldn't. I mean, it's, it's like uh, it's like that, uh, that uh, case uh, when uh, a school gave uh, laptop computers to the kids. Pennsylvania. Yeah, and they started uh, spying on them uh, when they were at home. I mean, that's, that's certainly a violation of their privacy rights. Well, and they, what are we, and why? Exactly. And it was the school themselves that announced it like it was a good thing. You know, Mr. Benny, it's almost like a revolution of these crazy control freaks against the rest of us. They're just doing it like it's their religion, no matter how crazy. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, that's absolutely right. No, I, I agree totally with that. I mean, it's a it's a matter of standing up for, for your rights. I mean, I've never I have never known Americans not to stand up for their rights until this this current cycle with the terrorism i mean and what they've done is they fear mongered us into thinking that oh we're all in so much danger we better just uh, forget about our rights and let them do anything they want to try to protect us well they aren't really trying to protect us if they were they wouldn't be doing this bulk acquisition they'd be doing the targeted exactly stay there and explain that in 70 seconds when we come back and we'll take phone calls two more seconds with william william benny is our guest Former technical leader for intelligence with the NSA. He was number, either number number three, number two, depending on how you look at it, of the National Security Agency. Blew the whistle back in 2001 about illegal spying. Also pointing out that there was so much of it, it would like blind us to real stuff. 
And they didn't do anything. They SWAT teamed him years later and tried to set him up. He's a real hero for doing his job. And as he said, most people low level in government are not bad. It's as you get higher level, they want compromised individuals. Next segment, we're going to go to Steve, Chris, Eugene, Scott, Jeremy, and others with your questions or comments for William Benny. And he posts his information at exposedfacts.org, major whistleblower website. But we were talking back before the break about Pennsylvania and other areas where, and I mean, that was like eight years ago, where the school gives out all these, quote, free laptops. They're not free. They're taxpayer paid for. And then they were watching kids in their showers. They called the police because a girl was eating Skittles. They said they were pills. And then the school themselves was bragging about it is how they learned. And so there's a revolution going on by government and corporations who just spy on us. And nobody's getting prosecuted. Nobody's getting in trouble. And this stuff is opening us up, these back doors to private hackers and other groups to steal our data. But it is coming to a head. Mr. Benny, in the three minutes before break, this is a short segment, you say you do see things getting better. Uh, how do you see that worm turning? What needs to be done? Well, I need. I think uh, fundamentally they need to have uh, 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 re uh, uh, a restructuring of how uh, NSA is permitted to do business, and it requires some very simple laws would handle it. Like, for example, if they simply said to NSA or any other intelligence agency or any agency of the government of the United States, if they were try if they were if they were holding data about a U.S. citizen, that they must have a warrant; otherwise, they must purge their database of that data. That would be pretty simple. So that would that would eliminate a, a, any possible way of them, uh, you know, having secret uh, interpretations of anything. And, so they and could scoop it, scan it, but then purge it. Right. Exactly. They'd have to purge it, and they'd have to require they require a time limit of at least no more than, you know, say <clears throat> you have 24 hours to recognize this. If you don't recognize that you have a U.S. citizen there without a warrant, and you delete it, then you are now in violation of the law. So that would put them right on the spot. And uh, that would make it Im almost impossible for them not to not, not to fo follow the law, uh, because then then you need to prosecute them. Once you once you find something like that, you have to follow through. If you don't follow through, then there's no teeth behind the law. Just like right now, when it comes to uh, whistleblowers, they follow through the, in the law and they prosecute people. But when it comes to a administration people like General Petraeus or anybody else that does things, they get slaps on the hand and never get really get prosecuted or anything or threatened. So that's an inconsistent application of the law, and they need to be consistent in what they do, and they need to follow through with everybody. What are some of the other solutions, William Benny? Uh, well, I mean, they're very simple. I mean, if you take a technical approach, I mean, we already developed a technical approach that would allow them to do a focused attack on, on <clears throat> terrorism or dope smuggling or uh, international crime. And we left it with them, and they uh, basically ignored it because it didn't get this bulk information acquisition system, which was the thing that really requires lots of money uh, and builds an empire. And so that's fundamentally uh, why they went that way. Uh, so so uh, they should implement that, but they aren't. And that's all com – that, by the way, is all a part of the uh, DODIG report – uh, 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 it, it was it's titled Trailblazer and Thin Thread Requirements. That was all documented in that, and and the uh, Intel, the NSA, and also the DoD and everybody tried to suppress that as much as they could because they didn't want that knowledge out. Of course. Well, I mean that that's how you suppress any any uh, reasonably good development that would make it uh, lawful in what you're doing. And sure, stay stay there, sir. We're gonna take calls. When you study legislation, when you study the news, you really marvel at the revolution of criminality in major corporations and government where they get together in these big corporate lobbying boards and just basically decide to buy off the politicians. And then in mass, they just violate the law, not just countrywide, but worldwide. And they do it with the same playbooks. It really is organized crime. That's what I'd call it. Organized crime. Same stuff that brought down Mexico that I've seen bring down third world countries is bringing us down.
I mean, we've got a video that's up on Infowars.com out of NBC Atlanta, Channel 11, called The Back Room, where Georgia bills are made. And then it, it just says, here, sign your name here, legislature, you're supporting this bill, and we'll pay you X number of, of money. And it just shows how the country's up for sale. And it's one thing if lobbyists lobbied for stuff that's legal. But a lot of times they'll lobby for stuff that's illegal. Then they'll just change the law later to get in line with what they've just done. It's simply amazing. And then there's how the NSA, and I want to go to your phone calls with William Benny. There's how the NSA is constantly getting caught, along with other major corporations it works with, stealing data from economic groups for economic warfare, but not even giving it to U.S. companies, farming it out to international groups. I mean, it, it is such an unlevel playing field. And with this amount of inside knowledge, they can corner any market they want. Mr. Benny, that's my greatest concern after foreign countries being able to go through all these back doors into our systems, as we just saw with the 21 million you know, uh, people working for the government having their data stolen by the Chinese government is that it allows select crony groups to corner global markets with the inside knowledge. Yeah, that basically gives them the power to be able to do that. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's, a, major, that's a major issue. I mean, even within the country, they can do that. Like, they can leverage companies inside any country also. How do they do that? Well, it's just a matter of seeing the data that they're doing. If you're if you're uh, bidding for a contract, for example, whether it's internationally or or within the country, uh, <clears throat> then uh, any conversation or any data you're you're pricing, you're trying to price your your bid. Uh, that information would be flowing around your your company, and that could be acquired, and then they would know everybody's bidding position, and then they could position themselves to win the contract. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. That's right. Yeah. I mean, it's a question of whether you can trust them. How how can you trust people who don't tell you the truth? I mean, that's the, the, how can the public trust anybody in the government because they've never been. I mean, they have a consistent track record of lying to us. There seems to be a over the top <laughs> arrogance, a bravada, a chutzpah in government. And I'm not a Republican or a Democrat, but it seems like under Obama that has really intensified. Is it just the corruption's growing and so it's going to get worse no matter who's in or is there something different about the obama administration uh i think it's pretty standard i mean i think it was there with the bush administration it just uh it just got worse with obama i mean uh, i think he's basically doubled down on what bush was doing so that now there's uh, twice as much capability as existed before so it's a matter of uh, <clears throat> if you have the power, uh, you know, how much power do you have and how much can you exercise of it? And I think that as that knowledge grows, that power grows, and so therefore they have greater capabilities of, uh, of uh, doing uh, more and more things. So I think it's only a matter of uh, whatever administration is in, they're going to use that power that's available, and that means that... Uh, that means that all of this information that's being collected on this grand scale and the accelerating scale is only going to make it more possible for them to do what they want to do. And now it's come out that not just the DEA, but the FBI, all of them are doing parallel construction with fake court cases setting people up. I mean, it's, 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 it's like I thought if we exposed the evil, it would dissipate. Instead, they, the, the, the devil just sits right next to you and says, yeah, I'm here. And then yeah, and in fact, uh, we uh, we had uh, we had talked to the uh, president's uh, civil liberties oversight board about this, about the parallel construction and the and the corruption and and uh, 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 subversion of our entire judicial process. And they had, they told us that the administration assured them that if any of this information ever was used again against someone in a court of law, that that defendant would be told. Well, I have yet to hear of a case where that's happened. And the feds have a 97% conviction rate. Uh, let's talk to Steve in Virginia. You're on the air with an American hero, William Benny. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, Steve, I think with this OPM breach, I think what a lot of people don't realize is that not only are they guilty, but so is the FBI. And agencies like the CIA, where they invest a lot of money in their employees, they're burned. 
why would the CIA have any confidence in the FBI to do background investigations in which their employees get burned? Basically, the SF-86 is useless, and the American people, they don't trust our government anymore. And quite frankly, as a consumer, I cannot buy a flexible spread-spectrum audioizer where I can secure my phone conversation using spread spectrum audio in which I have the flexibility of buying crystals and hardware to make my system appear so that the NSA can't tap my phone. How come there ain't any hardware manufacturers coming out there and doing it? That's, or a, are there laws absolutely. That stop that? Th that's a great question. Uh, why, why aren't people making a billion dollars uh, off of uh, encryption systems? Uh, I mean, is the big problem feasibility, or does the government come after you, Mr. Benning? Uh, if you've noticed, uh, uh, there's this discussion about NIST and NIST approval of the encryption system for commercial use. So uh, <clears throat> the point is that NIST and NSA are together, so that when an encryption system goes to NIST for testing and approval for commercial application, NSA knows about it, and they see the algorithm, and they they are the ones who actually approve it behind NIST. So NIST, NIST. And, the, and the patent office and all of them give the keys of the kingdom to any new That's right. system. That's correct. Right. And if it, does, if it doesn't get approved by NIST, it doesn't get uh, commercially accepted. Is there any over-the-counter uh, online software for Skype or for Google uh, or for any other communication <laughs> system that encrypts it good enough where they're not going to be able to mess with it? Well, with the Bull Run program, uh, it makes all of that uncertain anyway. So it's really hard to say that there is anyone that is, in fact, secure. Including the government. Including the government, yeah. Total insanity. Absolute insanity. You know, I know... I mean, it's, it's even more insane than that, though, Alex. If you, look, if you look at it, one part of NSA is the Information Assurance Directorate. That's supposed to secure the communications of the United States, right? And the other part's operations. They're supposed to break into these communications. Well... If you look at this, this is now dealing with the worldwide standard of the Internet. So on the one side, they're trying to protect it. On the other side, they're trying to break into it. And when they break into it, they don't tell the defense side that they've done that. So they can't defend against it, you see. So, so they're actually working against one another. And that's even just within NSA. That should be illegal. Yeah, it should be. Yeah. It's actually stupid, isn't it? <laughs> you know... I don't know if Atlantis was real or not, Mr. Benny, but the analogy, the parable is certainly useful where they got a super technology and blew themselves up. I don't know if we're going to make it as a species acting this stupid when our own leadership behaves like this. I mean, they have to know all these back doors and all this ubiquitous tech and everything, these Trojan horses and all the appliances is going to backfire on them. I mean, why would anyone want to do something like this? Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, they certainly should, uh, if they're going to have an effort, they should coordinate it and they should make it, uh, they should make it where it actually does protect people and, and their communications for, for privacy and sure. all, what have you. Well, Wayne Madsen's so, I mean, coming I, up at the bottom of the hour, and he was in NSA security, but I've talked to a lot of their folks, high level like you, mid level like him, and they all said, look, we didn't spy on anybody domestically until a few years before 9 11. You would get, you know, in deep trouble for that. Everybody knew this is America, not 1984. We don't do that. And, and, well, and then just suddenly somewhere it all just changed where it's a free-for-all. Where was that point? Well, it, 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 the, actually the 9-11 event was the, uh, was the leverage that they used to do this in secret. You know, it, that was the ultimate threat that they could use to intimidate people to buy into the programs. So that's what they did with the four members of Congress, the House and Senate the Intelligence Committee chair and ranking member. And that's, that's what they also did with the, the senior judge on the FISA court. So once they co-opted them in and had it running for a couple of years, then they co-opted more people in on the court and more people in on the, in the Congress, the leadership. Once they got that leadership in, you see, and, and at the same time, they had the Department of Justice, the attorney generals, and so also co-opted in. It was all based on this false premise that if we don't do this kind of thing, uh, we're going to be exposed to a lot of uh, more terrorism. When, in fact, the CIA did a very good and effective job taking care of terrorism. World William, your phone just cut yeah. out. Uh, start back over. You said the CIA did an effective job and it cut out. Mm.
uh, well, they probably didn't want you to hear it, uh, but they did a really professional, effective job at getting rid of the worldwide network of terrorism when they went into Afghanistan. That really, that really wiped out their capacity to do an international attack. That was really a very competent, professional job, and they, de they deserve our appreciation for that. But then now they've reconstituted it with the Free Syrian Army funded by NATO, and now it's bigger than ever. Yes, well, uh, when, you, when you don't follow up success with uh, smart programs, you, you allow things to reconstitute themselves. That's their problem. They won't even call this guy in Chattanooga a terrorist. Can you believe that? Uh, no, I can't, because obviously, I mean, that's obviously what it was. It's just insane political correctness to the point of, of mental illness. <laughs> that's right. They have to delude themselves into thinking that uh, what their thought process is is correct, and that's basically what they've done. Let's jam in they're some more mentally, calls. Sorry, yeah. go ahead. No, I, I was just saying they're mentally um, uh, corrupting their thinking. That's it. They're smoking their own dope, as they say. I skipped this yep. break. We're going to go 10 minutes and let our guests go, and then Wayne Madsen joins us with some breaking news. Chris in New York, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Mr. Benny. Um, I want to know uh, William's take, since we now live in the uh, process of understanding the human domain, how can this be connected with the Watson IBM computer that may be connected in the future with Obamacare and deciding the health care of our citizens? Oh, it is, actually. That's yeah. a great question. That ties into Obama's secret race database, data mining everything, that ties into his new gun control database, where they're going to use a program used by the VA, I mentioned that earlier, uh, to just throw people on a list saying that because you get disability funding, you can't have a gun. Uh, can you speak to computers being programmed to make the decisions for humans, sir? Oh yeah, that's true. That's in fact that's one of the that's really one of the main driving factors for the White House Big Data Initiative that they issued in early 2012. The whole idea there was to have uh, uh, industry come up with algorithms that could uh, uh, go through massive amounts of data, which they're collecting on everybody in the country and the planet, and figure out the uh, things that are important for them to do and uh, to or actions that they should take. Basically, it's minority report on a super massive scale. That's how to figure out what people are intending to do or what they're all about uh, from the data that you've acquired on them in every domain. Uh, and it's all done automatically with software then presented to people to make decisions and take actions. That's, that's part of what I think you're getting at, Alex, and also, I guess, uh, what the caller is getting at. And it, that is quite, I mean, that's basically artificial intelligence being used and applied uh, on, under a rule-based system that's being developed by analysts in many, many departments of government, none of whom are using things in a necessarily a disciplined or professional way. So they're going to make a lot of mistakes. Well, it's like you said six months ago in the London Guardian, uh, when you testified before the parliament uh, or, or the EU parliament, the NSA is about total population control. Close quote, this is social engineering, uh, so they can manipulate markets, know what we're going to buy before we buy it. Uh, I mean, a microcosm is the old customer loyalty cards that it's been proven in court are to decide what you'll pay more for so they can rip you off, not so you get a loyalty card. You just think you're, you're, you're getting something for nothing, but really you're being gamed. And now they want to just feed all data federally through this system and get industry to do it, I guess, kind of legalizing it. Yeah, well, that's uh, <clears throat> that's basically the whole idea behind all this big data, White House big data initiative, too. That's the same. It's the same issue. It's getting back to the being able to do uh, what what the the movie, the Minority Report, depicted mentally. People were reading their minds and projecting into the future. Well, they're 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 doing that and wanting to do that with data collected on everybody in the in all domains of activity of people, uh, including their health, finance, and everything else. And and then do a, that kind of projection uh, uh, with that with software running against that data. Chilling, simply chilling. Thank you, Chris. Uh, great uh, question. And uh, let's go to Eugene in Missouri. You're on the air, with William Benning. Good afternoon, guys. Um, I'm thinking about writing an article on this, and you guys have touched on all of the important points with this: uh, the spying of government leaders, 
the spying of all populations, the merging of countries into umbrellas for countries. Um, I would say that this is, in an era of race baiting, the ultimate form of racism against the human race, all of this spying. It is. It's a tiny elite using AI systems to surveil everyone, to rig everything for a totalitarian takeover. Yeah, so in an age of race baiting, this really is just racism for the whole human race if you're not above the fray. Well, that's what I've been saying. They're getting us to infight while they set up the end game of basically artificial intelligence systems to just set up a hellish system. I appreciate your call. Mr. Benny, if we don't turn this around, the way this is being used, this commitment to authoritarianism we're seeing, where do you see it ending, sir, if things don't go well? Well, I see us uh, basically. Uh, uh, I see it ending up in the in in basically destroying uh, the essence of humanity. I mean, that fundamentally, we won't be able to uh, be human anymore. That's the way I look at it. I agree. I mean, because... why, I mean that's why. I mean, that's why you know we fought a revolution, right? Well, the essence of humanity is free association, is privacy. Exactly. So many historians and philosophers have pointed out, if you don't have privacy, you don't have uh, humanity. That's right. That's the way I look at it, too. But then notice the elites, they want to be secret. Spying on them is illegal, and it should be. But when they spy on us, it's no big deal. So it is the ultimate form of discrimination, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's a discrimination against humanity. My gosh, uh, the rise of the machines with a tiny technocracy controlling it above the law. It's not a science fiction book. It's 2015, and we're talking to the whistleblower, William Benny. Jeremy in Kansas, you're on the air. This is the Info War. Go ahead. Yes, I completely agree with uh, Mr. Benny's uh, solution of the sunlight of truth to be our main remedy here. Um, I'd like for his take on the evidence for September 11th treason, which one strain of this is the cover-up. Here in Kansas, we have Congress people like uh, Representative Pompeo and Senator Roberts. Senator Roberts uh, stood down NSA whistleblower Russell Tice, who, while he was um, uh, in, I think, Air Force Intelligence, saw the papers for the wiretapping of Supreme Court justices and then Senator Obama. So we have an obvious uh, evidence strain of um, blackmail for why there's a cover-up of this treasonous event. And then the direct uh, evidence, the fact of, of all of the videos that we can see of a high energetic technolo uh, uh, technology being used to destroy the buildings and the people in um, Manhattan that day, it was no coincidence that the uh, Saudi patsies were um, in a hotel across the street from NSA headquarters and Michael Hayden, and uh, also we, they were running... Well, um, let me speak uh, to this, because we only got a few minutes left, and I'll get to a few more calls, but what about the 28 pages now? We've had Congressman Jones on, Senator Graham has said what's in it, that Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. ran 9-11, and that there was basically some type of stand-down ordered, uh, and it came out that the NSA indeed did have the intercepts, but was stopped from doing its job. You were there when all this was happening. Uh, what's your take on that? Uh, uh, <clears throat> the NSA management uh, actually stopped uh, stopped using the program Thin Thread that we wanted, which is documented in the DODIG uh, report in 2005, <clears throat> which would have found all this material that they had in their database that they didn't know they had, but was there prior to 9-11 that would have, would have actually given them the foundation to prevent 9-11. But it also saw, and Tom Drake was able to run this program uh, after he took over the, pro the Thin Thread program after we left in, in October 2001. He ran it in early 2002, March or April, I believe it was. And <clears throat> in the, as a part of the fallout of that process against the entire database at NSA, they found material that showed the dispersal pattern of people who didn't succeed at hijacking other planes and and uh, all the information necessary to stop them even before 9-11 um, in, in August, starting in there and even going back. They found all of the phone calls that uh, Alexander said that went from the um, uh, Yemen facility back to San Diego, the two agents in San Diego, the terrorists there. They said they couldn't tell it was in San Diego. Well, the program found that very clearly. They were there in San Diego. The numbers were available and in the database. Wow. So all of that data was there, and none of it was addressed. And it's probably 
probably some of it might be in the 28 pages, you know. Well, it's amazing, sir. We appreciate your time. ExposedFacts.org. They just put a Reuters headline on screen that says it all, uh, where the federal government ordered agents to cover up illegal spying against the American people. Reuters, exclusive U.S. directs agents to cover up program used to investigate Americans. I mean, this just shows the organized crime uh, mentality that's taking over. Mr. Benny, thank you for so much time, sir, and thanks for your courage. Well, thank you, Alex, and thank everybody there at your show. For thank